Hi, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And a lot of people have been asking this question. So today we're going to talk about um, what's it called? I can't fucking remember. It was um, air compressed superchargers. I'm Jeff Smith, and I want to talk to you about a whole new way of making horsepower. It's really very exciting. Let me tell you a little bit about it. In the old days, supercharging is about using a power adder to make power. You're using a crankshaft supercharger or possibly a turbocharger to make horsepower. With compressed air supercharging, we're talking about a whole new way of making power. Think of it as carrying your own atmosphere on board. We're gonna have two carbon fiber bottles. Each of these carry 3,300 PSI and produce it forward and inject it into the engine under about 10 PSI, and you can make a lot more power. Um, so basically, they are using scuba tanks. Basically, that's what they're using. Um, and let me be very clear about this. This is for drag racing only. They themselves state that this thing will only run for 10 seconds. Yeah. And one other thing you have to remember, or not remember, realise, <laughs> is that this system, the way it works is you have scuba tanks. What does it say? Uh, 3,300 PSI, 3,300, that is also a shit pen, and it looks like we're just stuck with the black, 3,300 PSI, 3,300 PSI, uh, what I could find out about them tanks, or equivalent scuba tanks, is that they are a 15 litre tank, this could be slightly wrong, like I said, they don't give me they give me the um, DOT, the De Department of Transport. So the DOT number was DOT uh, 3AL, which is aluminium, uh, 3400, which is what it's rated to in PSI, um, which is 230 bar. So 230 atmospheres, basically, or close enough. Um, what else did it say? Oh, yeah, the bottles weigh 18 kilos each. Jesus. And they're going about carbon fibre, no they're not carbon fibre bottles, they are basically bottles with a carbon fibre wrap, they literally wrap the bottles. This is just to increase the internal stresses that the bottle can take, it's a scuba diving thing and you get on plant things sometimes. And so on, you can get gas bottles now, I didn't know this until recently, you get gas bottles that are just fiberglass bottles, like propane, I was like awesome. Um, but yes, uh, this thing basically... What a, what a lot of people might not realise is this actually just cuts off your throttle, uh, cuts off your intake. So there's your intake with your valve in, and then there's this box with a butterfly in, and then there's your intake to the air outside. This system basically just shuts that off. Um, because if atmospheric outside is just say, let's just say 15 PSI for simplicity, not that 14.5 nonsense. Um, you're trying to boost this by putting in. I can't remember what it did say. It did say that it'll put, it could put in like 35 psi or something. Um, <coughs> if you just didn't have this valve and just, just trying to piss air into your intake, well, it's going to piss back out. It's just going to piss out. So they have to have a valve system that shuts off your intake and then they basically use the bottles to feed the engine. Now, the real benefit from this is, yes, you can go high PSI and stuff like that, but one of the other benefits is that they can massively drop temperatures, intake temperatures, so basically increase density an awful lot as well. And that's why they can get silly numbers out of it. Um, it's just like spraying a deodorant on your hand or something like that, or just spraying a deodorant can, you feel that it gets cold. Um, them gases are basically going from a liquid state to a gas state when they do that they rapidly expand and they take energy with them in the form of heat they take that heat with them that's where in a sense the energy comes from to convert from a um, liquid at high pressure to a gas at lower pressures so basically when you um, it's like just like I said it's like spraying a deodorant can or you know them air blasters you get the, the canned air kind of things you spray them they get cold in your hand this is what happens to the intake here, so your charge densities can go through the roof, which is probably just as much or as important as actually using these higher pressures and stuff. The fact of the matter is, is they've got graphs, and I'll show you the graph. You can see that with these bottles using one or two, um, stuff like that, 
that you can um you get silly silly power but your time decreases because obviously these bottles are only so full could you ever use this someone was saying to me could you ever use this on a motorcycle to do drag racing yeah you could but the size of the bottle is a bit limiting um you know this size and all the rest of it you're talking about 3500 liters eh, about that at 15 liters and having that at 15 psi so you you know just atmospheric base because you've got to cut this valve off um it's not going to last you long whatsoever you know and people say well couldn't you just have it for a button that you could squirt you know like i say you've probably got 10 seconds or less it's like <coughs> 10 seconds you'd go through that button in no time you have a go and you go whoa and you go that's awesome and you do it again and then you fuck it out and you're carrying around these bottles that are 18 kilos for one and they've got a double system um it's a lot of weight you could get smaller bottles but then if you go smaller it's not going to last you as long you know you are basically replacing the intake air that's outside and you're replacing that with compressed air that's in these bottles it works for drag racing, you know, there's a lot of things that work for drag racing, like um, chill boxes, ice boxes, where you pass your intake through a box full of water and ice, you know what I mean, instead of using an intercooler, because you can get your charge densities really low. It's like using, um, you know, a, an air-to-water cooler, just like an intercooler, not an air-to-air -air one, but an air-to-water one. Um, but you're using ice, you know what I mean, you can use ice and ice, you know, with water, so you're easily zero degrees or even a bit lower. And, you know, because they only need to do runs that are only 10 seconds long, then, well, the ice melts, yeah, but they don't give a fuck, you know what I mean, 10 seconds and you're done. This is why we don't use these systems on the road and stuff like that. I know someone's going to ask the question, so I might as well answer it now. Well, can't you just have a system where the engine pumps air into a bottle and then as soon as that air's into that bottle when you're riding around normally, can't you just have a boost button where you just use it when you need it? Right, well, number one, again, is the size of your tank. Yeah, uh, a lot of the... The reason why that has a, da a um, department of transport, the DOT... Uh, number on it is because it has to be safe to be carted around you would have to on drag racing they don't care but if you want to use it on the road you'd have to get it certified you'd have to get it replaced every five years i think it's every five years for gas bottles these days you know it's just a hazard not only that is it will be a big bottle if you had it for motorcycles you could have a smaller one but then the amount of energy that you're using to try and pump gas into a bottle you might as well just use that energy just to ride around, fuck the weight gain, and just use the power you've got. Or supercharge or, or turbocharge. At least you're recovering energy in some way. Well, with turbos you're recovering energy, so... You know what I mean? Oh, that makes sense. It works. Let's just not, let's not be... You know, I'm not. they're not bullshitting. It's just a system that is a very, very niche system. Um, you know, there's a guy back in the day who used it with his funny car. Uh, for your funny car, you're going to have to have massive bottles because they have big displacement and they flow so much air and use so much fucking fuel. Yeah, you can use it, you can't use it, blah, 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 blah. Um, one day we are going to do a thing where I'm going to have a variable compression engine that basically uses a similar system to this. Um, just by bit, not compression, uh, it's a variable charge engine, put it that way. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.